Here is Nikki here. This is the slide deck for the first slide. Oh, it's important. It's not visual. It's not in the public folder. It's brown. No, because I don't. It's uh, it's okay. Because I did add the whole thing. Okay, you can go to the mark and have all of it. Okay, you want. I'm just looking for Nikki. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Nikki, you want to join us online, but. Okay, but she is. So we might have fewer sessions. Well, no, I've told her I'd be happy to offer. Sorry, for the mic. Say the computer routine. Okay, so for those of you who were hoping to be part of Nikki's session, she offered to do it in the future as a Tadwig event to let if people want to take on the topic she put up here, which we're going to see, then she can we can do it later. It was just gets just gauge interest. Yes. Okay, great. All right. So we will go ahead and get started. I think we have um, all of our other speakers here. So welcome to the unconference. This is where we kind of break free of the presentation download and kind of get active and uh, discuss things, debate things. And um, so we have six now uh, conference topics and we are going to do pitches. So the pitches will be 90 seconds. This will give you an idea of what each of the topics are going to be about so that you can vote with your feet and decide which topic is most interesting to you. And uh, is there anything else, Timmy? Oh, and in the Slack. So the Slack is the place to post your discussion. There's a Slack channel for each one of the topics. So you'll join that Slack channel for the topic that you're interested in. All the discussion should happen there. And if you have a uh, final uh, outcome from your session to put it in there. And so pay attention to who's speaking because that's the person to, if you like their topic idea, go with them. And we'll figure out um, after all the pitches where we're all going to locate to, to have our, our sessions. So um, with that, we will start with the first pitch and Arthur will be coming up. Hi, everyone. Um, I gave a talk on I don't know what it was, Tuesday on SIM5. So there's a lot of discussion on the SIM5 Slack channel on um, formulate names. So just a few questions there that would be good to get some answers to. What should we call them? Uh, is a BIS standard the way to go? Um, how should the names be structured? Or should we just use DOIs? That's been one suggestion. Uh, what are the rules for creation of formulaic names if we're going to have some sort of a standard way of doing it? And any other topics people want to bring up? So we'll be sitting. I'll be sitting somewhere, whether anybody joins me or not, is yet to be seen. And we can have some discussion. I think Shelley is going to take some notes of our session. And um, we can put any ideas in Simo far in the Slack channel. So if you're in another one and you've got ideas, then please add them into that Slack channel so that we can continue. 
Great. So formulaic names, you're going to go with Arthur. Um, the next one is Nikki. So she's willing to do that at a different time. So um, we probably will not have that one here today. Uh, the next one is me. I selfishly created this unconference because I wanted to talk about something. <laughs> and so, um, you know, what I want to talk about is satellite observations of species. So this is, um, we can see that there are seagrass, uh, you know, we can monitor them using satellites. So this is not tags on an animal. Um, instead, this is, you know, satellites observing species. And the question I have is, what is the best way to integrate this raster-based observations with the tabular-based observations we already have um, going? And you know, should we have a footprint um, and a centroid like you see here, or should we have each pixel gets a lot long and uh, coordinate uncertainty in meters is based on the size of the pixel? And uh, the data come in net CDF, which was talked about in the last session, so that may be worth discussing too, but I'm really interested to hear if there's other ways of doing this, if people have other ideas for how to make this happen. So if that sounds of interest to you, come with me. Um, and so the next one. Thank you. I cleaned up the slides a bit. Um, so uh, one topic that has uh, come up a couple of times already, uh, um, there are certain overlaps between several TEDWIC standards, um, and there's not a good way to map them. Um, first of all, that's like most often it's not a one-to-one -one relationship, so not as easy to say, there, this is there. This is an example, Darwin co-order maps to higher taxon name in ABCD if higher taxon rank equals order, uh, or that in some cases we need to like, uh, concatenate different uh, things and um, uh, sometimes we don't have exact matches only like related so it's similar but not the same uh, in general each standard does it differently the, the mappings and sometimes they are quite hidden and hard to find so um, the idea here was to um, uh, yeah have a standardized way to map between the different standards there is a solution for that, I think. I haven't worked with it yet. The simple standard for sharing ontology mapping, SSOM. I know that the people who did the Darwin core mix mapping have some experience with that, though I'm not quite sure um, if they used precisely this or just were inspired by it. Um, and the question is, well, um, does that work for other mappings? Um, I'm particularly interested in general ABCD Darwin core mappings, but there are certainly others as well. Um, can we use this to generate a standardized way of um, presenting those mappings on the website? And uh, lastly, the other problem is I have to leave in 45 minutes, so I cannot really champion this session. So, uh, but I still want to present it. If anybody wants to talk about this, um, we can start the discussion. Maybe somebody else can take over this group um, or we have the rest of the discussion online. Thank you. <laughs> David bending the rules. Okay, uh, next is Peter with Mobile Friendly Website. Hi, I'm Peter. Um, for a couple of projects, I have to make websites and I want to make it easy for myself. So I created a little team that I can reuse and customize for websites. If you want to learn how to do this too, you know, a bit of GitHub, a bit of Markdown, uh, then come to my session, which is going to be a more hands-on workshop on how to make websites like these, team websites, uh, lab websites, standard websites, uh, documentation conferences, all using no coding experience required. Thanks. Yay. Okay, Deb, eDNA. Oh. Very cool. Thank you for doing this, Demi and Abby. Um, on the actual copy of the slides, I popped something in, but of course we're using the copy from before I did that. So if you do refresh it, you'll see it. Um, so environmental DNA, how much environmental DNA are we gonna have, right? Is it linear or is it asymptotic? Hello? Exponential, okay, there we go. So what do we do about that? Do we have the standards we need? Um, I would answer yes to a certain extent. Um, however, when it comes to implementation and adoption of those standards, we have challenges. 
more and more uh, places that are doing this kind of work hire a company to do it, uh, right? Here's my samples. Please analyze them for me. Give me the data back. Is that data in a standard format or a proprietary format? Hello? Le yes? Proprietary, right? Um, and so we're going to have a problem very soon if we don't already because either they're going to have to retroactively map or it would be much better if we can liaison with those companies and figure out ways if they're already doing that, that they map to the current standards we have. We also have a methods issue, right? The methods are going to change as the field is, they've already done so. Um, where do we store information about those methods? How do we make sure that people that are doing this work um, share those methods in a sustainable, discoverable way? And so that we can use that data now and into the future, right? You don't want these data piles that become sort of legacy. They're no good anymore for adding to our, our knowledge in a, in a bigger uh, expanded way. So I was recently part of the, let me know when my time is up, the UN General Assembly. Yeah, okay. And a science summit where I got to talk about eDNA and the uh, necessity of standards. I interviewed some of the people in this room about that. And it's interesting, one of the things that will come out is a, a recommendations, one of which will probably be some sort of committee to make recommendations about this. And some of the members are very pro ISO standards. And I said what some of the issues are with, we already have some standards, maybe they could become ISO, but this bigger question of how do we embed the best practices for using these and for how do we develop the community uh, publishing and sharing of these methods and DNA in a sustainable way. Um, so if you're interested in talking more about that and what the big issues are and how you can be part of that UN committee that's probably going to get formed, talk to me. All right. Very cool. Uh, Guillaume, or oh, I guess Francisca, Francesca is going to... Uh, present this one. Hi, everybody. So Gio and I are hoping to get your feedback on, um, on a topic today. Um, basically, the monitoring community uses the event core, the occurrence extension, and the me measurements or facts extension in very concrete ways, where an event is um, a predefined um, sampling protocol and, and an occurrence is an observation of an individual um, and a, a measurement or fact um, is a measurement taken on the, either the, the occurrence or the event. Um, so we would like to know basically um, if there, um, if we all agree on these very concrete terms that we use in, in the monitoring community, and how this will evolve with the next iteration of Darwin Core. Um, so if this is of interest of you, um, to you, then Guillaume and I would be happy to discuss this further. All right, that was the quick, uh, uh, I don't think, yes, no more slides. So that was, ah, uh, sure. So, oh, right, for online folks, yes, if you're online, there are breakout rooms in the Zoom. You'll have to self-organize and just kind of go to a breakout room, and there will not be a moderator or a lead for each of the breakout rooms, so it's kind of just a place to chat if these topics seem of interest to you, and Arthur would like you to, you know, save the chat that you have if you're in Zoom um, from that, so, uh, okay, great, so hopefully... Sounds exciting. There seems something you really want to join, and uh, we are going to head to that now. So go with the person that has the topic that seems of interest to you. They should not stay. Should not stay. Okay, I will. All right, here. Wow. Some, some extra rules. If you're, if you're a speaker and you want to find follow somebody else, that's not possible. So you stay in your own group, <laughs> and you're not obliged to stay in this room. So you can find a spot there, there, but also there outside there are seats where you can go and have your discussion. Okay, good luck. <laughs> <laughs>